this is Jared from Commit to Quality, and in this video, we're going to go over Postman Collections. So in the previous video, I made two requests, one to the JSON placeholder and another to Board API. If you haven't seen these videos, I'd suggest pausing this and going to watch those now so you can be in the same position that I am. So with these two requests, they're not currently saved. They're not even related or organized. If I want to save my requests and organize them, I need to save them into, into a collection. And all a collection is, is a folder that stores all the requests related to a given API. To do this, let's, do, let's start it with JSON placeholder. What I can do is hit save. And here it's asking us to add it to a collection. In this case, we don't have a collection added. So let's create it. So I'm gonna create a collection and we'll say JSON placeholder. Let's hit create on that. And now with inside JSON placeholder, we can hit the save button, which means this request will be added. That's now saved. I can close this and you can actually see on the left side, inside collections, we have this JSON placeholder collection with that get request that we can open and close and do whatever we want to it. And it'll always be updated there. I could say, add to the one, send there. If I save this and close it, I can reopen and you can see it's saved as one. So that's added into the collection for us. Let's do the same for board API. So let's hit save. In this case, we already have a collection, but we don't want it inside JSON placeholder because this is a completely different API. So I'm going to say new collection and say board API. Hit create. Inside board API, we can hit save and all is good. We now have both our requests saved in the different collections and already the organization is just way neater and better. And of course we have everything saved where we want it. I will say these are both saved into my workspace. And if I want to have different workspaces, we could by clicking on workspaces and creating a new one. So I could go up here, click create new workspace and enter all the details I can create it. Now this is useful when you're working with a number of different development teams and maybe the different APIs we test in are owned by the different development teams. So I'm just gonna cancel that because I don't wanna create a new workspace. Let's go back to this. Now, like I showed you, I can go into this as many times as I want, hit send, change it, save it, undo it. Okay, so now with our collections, what I want to do is I'm going to re-put that back and hit send just to make sure it's okay, save it. Now what I want to do is I want to create another request, but I want to point it to, like, say, a different endpoint here. So I might say I want to only retrieve back with the ID of one. So now what I want to do is I want to make another request to the JSON placeholder API. So to do this, let's just close that down. To do this, I can just right click and say duplicate. And that's duplicated the same request for us. Of course, I can rename it. So I can rename it up the top here and we'll say posts dash one and we'll go to the post dash one endpoint. What I'm gonna do in this case, I'm just gonna add the forward slash one and hit send. So now I have another request doing something different. So I have this one, which will grab back all of the posts and this one, which is only gonna br bring back with the user ID of one. We can see response is good. Everything is working as expected for both of them. If I just expand that more, you can see the renaming has happened here as well. Now then, a well-known concept in programming is dry. Do not repeat yourself. We want to do the same thing here where we've got these two requests, but they both use in the same base URL. So what we can do is we can use a collection variable to say that every request that is made should use this base URL. And we set that in the variable. That means if we ever do change the URL, we only have to update it once. And it doesn't mean you have to update it in both of these calls or in really bad circumstances you might have many of these API calls and you only have to update it once, once you've got the variable. However, if you didn't have it, you'd have to update it in each individual call. So how do we do this then? So we can pick on any one of these. Let's highlight it. And what you see is you have this set as variable. Click on that and we can say set as new variable. Let's set the name to base URL. And the value is already entered because we highlighted it. And we'll select the scope 
as collection. Now we'll touch on global and the different type of variables we can have in a future video. This is just scoped to collection for now. So that means the base URL variable is only available to this collection. So the board API one wouldn't be able to use it. So I can click say set variable and you can see now the base URL has been added and we've got posts. So if I hit send, it's still working because we have that variable set up. Uh, two squiggly brackets as well is postman's way of saying use this variable. For them to hover over it, we can see the, the details as well. So we can see exactly what it is. The current value is the one that's currently being used. So this is local to you in your postman. The initial value is the value others will see when you share your collection. So a good example of why the initial value might be different of the current value is sensitive data. If you were sharing passwords in the initial value, you may enter something generic like enter your password. And in the current value, which only you can see, it would actually have your password. So when you're sharing these collections, you're not sharing sensitive data. And the scope is the level the variable is visible at. And like I said, we'll go over this later on in future videos. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to copy it onto this request to say, I want both using that variable. And if I hit send, all works perfect. I'm going to save both of those and let's close those down. We've shown you how to add a collection variable. We've shown you how you can see what the values are, but how do we actually edit collection variables? So what we can do is we can click on the collection here and we can say edit. And inside here, you see there's a variables tab. So if I click on this, here are all the variables specific to the collection. So inside here, you can change the initial value, the current value. So like I said, if this was sensitive data, we could remove this and just enter something, but the current value would be whatever is in my local. Now you can also add variables in here. You can say, uh, let's just say password, initial value, enter password, and then the current value, the password could be testing, which only I am going to see. You can, of course, remove them as well. You can just uncheck them, which means they won't be used, or you can actually delete them. Just deleted that password one now. And you've got some options in here. We're going to cover these off in the next video when we talk about environments and variables. But just a little sneak peek, you can reset your current value. So I could set this to subscribe and then decide, oh, that's not gonna work. I can reset it. And the same for persist, you could change the initial value. So if we have that as empty, and now I say persist all, it'll take whatever the current value is. The rest of the variables information is gonna be covered in the next video. If you do have any questions, please drop a comment down below. A like and subscribe is appreciated. As always, thanks for watching.